are you? Good. Good. Um, I'm excited to speak to you today. Um, I wanted to ask you first about uh, growing up in Manitoba and uh, your Sioux roots and just telling uh, tell us a little bit about where you got raised and started. Well, first of all, I should briefly tell you about how we ended up in Canada. That'd be great. We are actually, uh, the Sioux in Canada are non-status. Okay. Um, Sitting Bull came, it sounds like a history story and it is. Uh, Sitting Bull came to Canada many years ago to, he was fed up with what, what was being asked of him in the U.S. And he felt that the Queen Mother would allow him to live in peace in Canada. So he came up uh, with some of the people with him. Mm -hmm. And we settled in, well, they settled in southwestern Manitoba and a little into Saskatchewan down very, obviously, North Dakota is mm -hmm. right against the two prairie provinces. And uh, he was, went back to the U.S. and then came back one more time. And the second time he went back, he was actually killed. He was imprisoned and then he was killed with Crazy Horse. Probably my history does sound like <laughs> it is a history. And many of us stayed in Canada and we were, the Canadian government allowed us tiny little reserves to live on, though we don't have status in Canada. Wow. But uh, we have stayed on here. We are Canadian citizens. Mm -hmm. you know, we are a few generations now. Yeah. And we know you as Maxine Noel. That's correct. Um, but that's not the, na the name you sign on your, your paintings. No, it's not. You sign your name with your Sioux name. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell us about that. And it's actually, I use a shortened version of that name. Mm -hmm. Uh, my entire name is Mafia Iyoyamani. I only use Iyoyamani. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd have to sign half the painting. Mm -hmm. It's a very long name. Yeah. And it was given to me when I was very, actually very young by, by a member of the family. And uh, it's a name I've always treasured um, and never had the opportunity to use. Mm. I was named Maxine with Noel was a name that uh, well, the government likes everybody in little orders. <laughs> okay. And we were, we were actually, uh, Native people were just handed out surnames. Wow. And we came along when there were the ends, I guess, Noel. <laughs> wow. And uh, so, but it, that isn't my proper name. Okay. It is Machbia Iyoyamalani. And I'm very proud name. of that name. an artist, right? Growing uh, up? No. Yeah. Um, I think what happens is when you're a child and you're good at something, you don't think that's exceptional. Okay. It's sort of like getting up, brushing your teeth, washing your face. Oh, you can yeah. draw a big deal. I really But you never relate. really think of it as being a, what you'll do as, you know, as... Mm -hmm. you know, uh, I know at one point I thought I should race cars and... <laughs> And then I took up uh, piano lessons, mm -hmm. and I thought I should be a concert pianist. So obviously, I'm not doing either of those. Mm -hmm. um, I worked for lawyers okay. for many years in Toronto, Bay Street Lawyers, and still wasn't sure if that's what I really wanted to do. I worked for lawyers in Edmonton, Northern Ontario, everywhere, and for about 13 years. And during that time, occasionally, I would do a painting. 
second. You know, I always, wherever I lived, whatever apartment, I would do more paintings, hang them on the wall. And a lot of them are very contemporary. I really didn't, I don't, I don't think I had anything to say yet. Okay. You know, it wasn't until I was in Northern Ontario, uh, I was approached to, uh, to run a Native Friendship Center, they're called, uh, by the Cree people in the North. And I said I would for a period of time until they found a permanent director. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, I uh, moved into, their, into the, the building they used for, for the Native people in that area, and all the walls were bare. So I thought, okay, why don't I just paint things and hang them up? <laughs> wow, isn't that interesting? <laughs> <laughs> and in, as part of that center, uh, one of the programs was a children's program. Mm -hmm. Now, friendship centers are situated all across Canada. And what they are is they serve as, they're usually located in cities and towns uh, near Native communities. So when Native people come into the city, they're looking for jobs or they need a place to, connection place, mm -hmm. they create these friendship centers. And that's what I was doing at the time. And they had a children's program called the Little Beavers Program. Mm -hmm. And Toronto for Ontario was the base. They had the head office for that. And the man who was in, this is interesting, the man they had uh, at that time, who was running the Little Beavers program at a head office, was a Cree playwright, musician, writer, Thompson Highway. And he came up to Northern Ontario and to, to review my little children's program, and he saw all the artwork on the wall. Wow. And he said, why don't you do something about that? You know, why don't you come to Toronto and do some... And I thought, hmm, I don't know. Should I, shouldn't I? But I did. That's so great. They found a, a director and I moved to Toronto and I was introduced to an already existing artist who introduced me to a gallery and that's where it began. So on March the 6th, 1980, I had my very first show in Toronto. Wow, what a career you've had. It's been busy. And how has your art changed over the years? Like when were was it the painting of women like we kind of, you're known famously for? Uh, very much. Yeah. Um, initially, I think, I was actually terrified to go to my own opening because I thought, at that time I didn't realize really that I was getting, you know, sort of the message across that I wanted to. And, it, and it, I was just, <laughs> and the, interestingly enough, the Globe and Mail reviewed my first show and they called it Law's Loss is Art's Gain. <laughs> anyway. Um, now, and what, I don't want to get too deep into this, but what is it that you want to get across? And, and, and I know that when I look at your, um, when I look at your paintings, I think of the infinite wisdom of a woman and the infinite um, peace that they hold in the universe. Um, and there's a feeling of calm that comes over me. Um, and what, I also want to ask, you know, what are their eyes open or closed? Like what the, what are you thinking when you're, when you're creating? Well, I paint women that I yeah. know, you know, and, and I, I don't know, I, I use my artwork to, uh, well, at the beginning I really, you know, wasn't quite sure what, what messages I wanted to, to get out there until I realized, you know, what is happening to women everywhere, all over the world. Mm -hmm. And I thought there's got to be some way I can help with mm -hmm. that and deliver messages of women, what they're really all about. Um, and I think I went a little overboard, but I don't think I did. Oh, I, I did. Uh, I started painting women as being very strong. Very, uh, you can be very strong, very feminine, and very spiritual. And that's actually a very scary thing for people I when you so meet too. women like that.
Well, I know around town that you are definitely known for your kind heart that you that leads everything you do and a lot of philanthropy and um, uh, working on uh, different all kinds of different associations that you donate it to and sit on boards with. And I want to ask you about the National Aboriginal Achievement Foundation um, that uh, that you are a big part of. Right? I was actually yeah. one of the founding yeah. board members of mm -hmm. the foundation. It was the, uh, the idea, actually, of, of a Mohawk orchestra conductor by the name of John Kimbell, mm -hmm. who um, he actually uh, was, I think he, he was spent a lot of time on Broadway. He was uh, an apprentice for Bernstein, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And uh, he decided that he wanted to create a foundation because in, on Broadway, he knew there were a lot of talented Native people, but he'd never seen them on Broadway. Okay. Why aren't they here, you yeah. know? So he, did, he decided to create this organization. And initially it was called the Canadian Native Arts Foundation. Mm -hmm. And it was to uh, create scholarship uh, funds for young Native people in, in visual and performing arts. Mm -hmm. And which, which we did do, it was brilliant. Uh, he actually, in order to set that whole foundation up, he, he risked his house <laughs> wow. and, and did a huge, uh, uh, huge show at Roy Thompson Hall with the Toronto Symphony Orchestra mm -hmm. and Bernadette Peters and, wow. and just invited everybody, he sold yeah. tickets. And uh, if that show had bombed, he would have lost his house, actually. Wow. <laughs> but wow. it was a huge success. Mm -hmm. It was an amazing success. So the foundation continued on, and eventually we realized that there was a need not just only for visual and performing arts, but in all aspects of life, right? Agreed, yeah. So we, it became the National Abor Aboriginal Achievement Foundation. That's great. I, I run a, a, a business called the Folk Army here that is teaching yeah. kids through music. But what I've realized after several years is that I'm, it's actually teaching them leadership skills that they use in all aspects. And so I'm kind of revamping the program to support that. You know what, because mm -hmm. they have a talent, but they need to know how to survive out there in the That's world. Right. How to exist yeah. and how to deal with, with yeah. what it is they're doing. There's so much more than just the actual talent. That's right. right. Yeah. And sometimes the talent um, ends up just being a coping me mechanism in their life that they go to as a place to renew and uh, exactly. a safe place. And, it, and they do something completely else with their life. But it's still right. really important, you know. Oh, good to yeah. you. That's great. Yeah. So um, I wrote a book recently called Many Moons. And it was uh, sharing crazy stories that had happened to me through... Um, writing songs, which okay. I've really had amazing things happen. I got to sing the anthem on Parliament Hill for Canada Day and, and play Space Oddity with an astronaut when he came back from outer space and all these wonderful things because of my art. Can you think of a story or a friendship that you've made that would never have happened if you weren't a painter and sharing your gift with the world? Oh, many, actually. Yeah. I know there's <laughs> so many, right? Because we, we mm -hmm. did the, the foundation, actually, we did award shows. With uh, CBC, there okay. were huge award shows, giant, giant things, and John, from being from Broadway, obviously, you know, liked huge, spectacular mm -hmm. things. So, I had the opportunity to design a lot of the the sets and, and costumes and everything. Oh wow! Uh, the in show. those award shows, yeah. And we, um, the foundation, actually, John went about. Um, it, it wasn't all government funded. It was all John's work of, of getting major uh, corporations to contribute to mm -hmm. these. So they became huge gala events. You know, mm -hmm. the, all the corporations came uh, with their tuxedos and evening mm -hmm. gowns. There were spectacular events. Oh man, I could imagine a Maxine Noel fashion show would be un unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> so I've actually been involved in a, a lot m more than that. I, mm -hmm. I've uh, worked in all mediums of art. I've had the opportunity to design, obviously, things on, on, uh, on stage. Mm -hmm. I've worked with Linda Lundstrom, our Canadian designer, yeah. to do design on some of her parkas. I've, awesome. Where does it end? I'm, yep. I love doing stuff. <laughs> isn't, isn't it wonderful? It yeah, is. where everything leads. Um, and then something, I, the last thing I was going to ask you about was just something that, an opportunity you had or an experience you were able to have beyond your wildest dreams that you never would have imagined that would happen in your life that you wanted to share? My, I, don't, I know it's a my lot. My whole career. Your whole career, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. <laughs> yeah. Beyond my wildest dreams, I never yeah. imagined it would go this far. Yeah, and it's it's not even stopping. You're, you're oh, no, busier I'm than ever. Busier than ever. So tell us um, what's on your plate right now. 
Um, I was very involved with uh, when the missing and murdered women situation became, uh, everyone became aware of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, can I design a piece that could at least create awareness and maybe make some money towards it? Mm -hmm. And so they were all on board. And I, uh, it was great because the companies who do my art cards and different products um, I, uh, it was before I asked everybody, <laughs> and I thought, I haven't, I haven't even thought of the p painting. What am I going to paint? Mm -hmm. So it took me the better part of a month to actually come up with what I thought could be a very, you know, that could help with this. And the image is called Not Forgotten. Actually, okay. my friend uh, Douglas St. Christian yeah. uh, came up with the title Not Forgotten, and uh, it is the... It, it is the original that is used in the Museum of Civilization to depict that event in Canada's 150th anniversary, that big show. Yeah. They actually have the original painting still wow. there, as a matter of fact. And we created it in many different ways. And I donated all royalties to it. And in its heyday, before the way the world is at the minute, hmm. There were times it would make as much as $8,000 every three months in royalties. Wow. That's so fantastic. Well, that is something beyond your wildest So now dreams. that the yeah. report has come out, I've yeah. turned around and I'm directing it to the Native Women's Shelter in Toronto. Ah. But I want to go further. That was actually... I want to create one specifically for women's shelters. Okay. So I'm working with Canadian art prints. I, I have to... One of, one of the things I have to do now <laughs> is to come up with a painting that could help the women's shelters across Canada. Great. So, yeah, I, to me, it's, it's you know, uh, my art is what I use to help. Wonderful. Well, thank you on behalf of all women everywhere for helping us. Oh. <laughs>
Kiss me.